Okay, so super quick video for you today showing a great little tip for making your selections in Photoshop so much better. And if you don't like using the pen tool, you're going to love this. Okay, so if you're anything like me, when I first started out, I avoided using the pen tool because I just couldn't get the hang of it. All this Bezier curve stuff, clicking and dragging, it ended up going all over the place, or I'd click somewhere accidentally and then totally mess things up or lose what I'd done. I ended up using it wrong by clicking constantly and putting down lots of anchor points, which is totally the wrong way to use it because for sharp lines, pin sharp corners and curves, the fewer anchor points you can use, the better. So I just stopped using it. Things have changed since then though, and now I love using the pen tool. Once you get to grips with it, it's a piece of cake. However, here's a cheat for getting pen tool quality selections without using the pen tool. So here's a picture I made of a Spitfire flying over a field of poppies. The Spitfire I made from an Airfix model kit and the background genuinely was a field of poppies that I photographed. I then cut the Spitfire out and made the final picture. So let's take this picture of the Spitfire, make a selection and cut it out. And of course there are lots of tools and techniques in Photoshop we could use to do that. But I'll just come over to the toolbar and I'll choose the Object Selection tool. In the Options bar at the top of the screen I'll make sure that the Object Finder checkbox is ticked. And very quickly now, when I bring my cursor over into the picture, you can see that the Spitfire has got this blue overlay telling me that Photoshop has identified it and so it's making a selection. All I need to do now is just press down and we'll see that active selection. When I bring my cursor away, we lose that blue overlay. Now the selection itself is going around a bit of this area here, which I don't really want, so we'll just get rid of that. I'll get my lasso tool, hold down the Option key on Mac and Alt key on Windows, and just drag around to say, look, we don't need that. So that'll go, and we'll just include this little bit here, holding down the Shift key, again with that lasso tool, and coming around like so. In fact, there's just a little bit there as well. So now that we have that selection, obviously I could tidy this up, but just to quickly show you what this is gonna be like, to cut this out, all I'll do is come to the Layers panel, and at the very bottom here, I'll click to add a layer mask. I'll then add a layer directly below by holding down the Command key on Mac or Control key on Windows, and clicking to add a new layer and then we'll go to the edit menu choose fill and we'll just put in uh, black and click OK so now when I zoom in we can see how good or not that selection was and you can see as I zoom in even though this wing was quite a defined line you can see how rough it is especially around here ignore this bit we didn't tidy that up but just look how rough all this selection is here this is not good now something like this would be the ideal candidate for using the pen tool, but we're not going to. So let's try something else. All right, so let's just zoom out. I'll double click on the hand tool and we'll revert this back to original. So I'll go to file and choose revert. So we're back at the starting point. This time I'm gonna make another selection. And again, we'll choose that object selection tool. The object finder is analyzing the image. We see this little spinning icon. So now that when I bring my cursor in, you can see that it has actually found it. So again, I'll press down to get the marching ants. Let's just tidy it up over here a little bit, get that lasso tool and remove this bit just here, just like we did originally, and we'll include this bit here. Again, just going really quickly and just add that little bit in. This time, rather than adding a layer mask though, I'm gonna come over to the right-hand side of the screen and choose the paths panel. And then right at the very bottom, without doing anything else, I'm gonna click on this little icon here, which says make a work path. I'll click on that and you can see now that rather than being an active selection known as the marching ants, we now have a path with what are called anchor points going around the Spitfire. Now we'll tidy this up later on, but I just wanna show you now what's happened. All we've done is we've made a selection, we've changed it into a path, and now all I'm going to do is turn it back into a selection. And I can do that by pressing this little icon at the bottom. Load path as a selection. So I'll press that. We now go back to see the marching ants. Let's now go back to the layers panel and I'll add the layer mask. We'll put the layer directly below and again we'll fill it with black. Edit, fill, choose black from the contents, click OK. 
and now we'll zoom in. But look at the difference. Look how much sharper that selection is going down the side of the wing just there. So why is this? Well, the selection tools in Photoshop are pixel based, so they're working with little tiny squares. However, paths, which is what the pen tool makes, are mathematically based, known as vectors, and these are far superior. Check this out. Here's the logo my best mate Dave Clayton made for me, and I have this open in Photoshop. If I zoom right in, look what happens. The sharp lines are no longer sharp. You can see the pixels. However, when he designed the logo, he made it as a vector in Adobe Illustrator and InDesign. So if we dive into those bits of software, look what happens when I zoom in on this vector-based version of the logo. Even when zoomed right in, the lines remain pin sharp. So let's take this a step further. Again, I'll zoom out and revert the image back to its original state. I'll make a selection, but this time use the Select menu and then select Subject and just tidy it up by using the lasso tool to remove this part. Then I'll come over to the Paths panel. Now I mentioned at the start of the video that the fewer anchor points we can use when creating a path, the better. Fewer anchor points are going to create crisper, sharper lines and curves. Now with that in mind, when we're in the Paths panel, we can control how many anchor points we have by holding down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows and then clicking on the Make Work Path icon. This brings up this dialog box with a tolerance value, and the tolerance value ranges from 1 through to 10. The lower the tolerance, the more anchor points, the higher the tolerance, the fewer anchor points. For example, if I use a tolerance of 1 and then click OK, look how many anchor points we get. Far too many for an object like this. This would not create sharp lines and curves. However, if I use a tolerance of 10 and click OK, look how many anchor points we now have. Far better for this image. Now that I have the anchor points, it's very easy for me to reposition them if I have to, such as here, where it's not following the line of the aircraft. All I need to do is use the Direct Selection tool by pressing A on my keyboard. I could also choose it from the toolbar. The Direct Selection tool allows me to click on an anchor point and reposition it. It also allows me to adjust the handles on each of the anchor points to control the curve or the corner. If I want to add or remove an anchor point, then I would just press P to get the pen tool, but all I do is make sure that the auto add and delete option is ticked. Then if I want to remove an anchor point, I simply click on it. And if I want to add an anchor point, I simply click on the path. Then I could just go back to the Direct Selection tool by pressing A and repositioning them if I have to. So all we need to do is remember the letter A and the letter P. Now once you're happy with your path, you have a choice. You could continue doing what we've done already by converting that path back into an active selection and using a layer mask, or you could use something called a vector mask. But I'll be honest with you, you probably really won't see any difference at all. Let me show you what I mean. I'll duplicate this image and on the first one, I'll turn the path into a selection and then use a layer mask to cut it out. And I'll add the black layer below and zoom in. Then on the other version, with the path still active, I'll go back to the layers panel, hold down the command key on Mac or control key on Windows and then click to add a layer mask. This gives me a vector mask and we can see the difference in the layers panel because it is grey. I'll then add a black layer below. Now if I zoom in on both by going to Window, Arrange, Tile All Vertically, then Window, Arrange, Match All, the left hand side is the layer mask version and the right hand side is the vector mask version. They're both the same. So in Photoshop, you might as well stick to a regular layer mask. Now all this aside, I would still highly recommend that you do give the pen tool another try. So I've added a link in the description to a video I made quite a while back showing a really easy way that you can do that. I've also added a link in the description to my best mate Dave Clayton's book, How Do I Do That in InDesign. However, that's all for this video. So I would really appreciate, as always, a thumbs up 
And if you haven't yet, just give us a subscribe because that's just a great way that you can support this channel. But for now, that's me. I'm done. I'll see you in the next video.